and good afternoon morning or evening uh today we'll be going over the highly anticipated tier 10 italian bb the sicilia now sicilia is going to be released in the upcoming 13.1 patch for a juicy 60,000 research bureau points so we do get a ship that we don't have to pay money for you can do some nice free grinding for those research bureau points and get yourself a beautiful 16 gun behemoth now her design is very similar to the tier 10 colombo but instead they use the retrofit u.s secondaries and anti-air guns as you can see they pretty much have atlanta guns on the sides there so you can just take a look there on that ship there they got little juicy guns they're very nice now these guns uh now this does mean that you do get the longer and higher range of the 5.8 kilometers but that doesn't mean you have a good anti-air though unfortunately now as you can tell as well this ship does not have sap for the main armament but that that does mean that these unused sap shells go to the secondaries instead so you heard me right it has secondaries it has sap secondaries with ap and he for the main armament now these secondaries do have potential to slap really hard they do hit hard when they hit but their poor accuracy definitely holds them back unfortunately and is a big pain because of that but at the same time though you're able to use that really good smoke to get in close and just farm for secondaries for days and it does so much damage it really does but once you get close to these secondaries you're going to absolutely obliterate most targets just for how much the dpm is with those secondaries now the other big difference is the fact that cecilia has he like i was saying earlier the colombo has ap and sap while the Sicilia has HE and AP, so it doesn't have sap for the main guns. Now, you do get a fast reload for a 16 gun time of 33 seconds, and if you build into it, like, of course, I'm gonna recommend that, uh, you, go, you get down to around 29 second reload, which is really good for having 16 gun BB. Unfortunately, though, you do get a 1.6 Sigma, which still leads to some some par accuracy but when you're playing it as more of a secondary ship when you get in close those guns do a lot of damage uh a lot a lot a lot of damage that ap can absolutely smack the living hell out of cruisers battleships alike and if you're at longer distance where you know it's not going to be as accurate just switch over to he baby that's all you got to do get those fires started have yourself a good time now you do keep in mind though as you can see those rear guns can rotate 360 both the rear guns can can do a 360 which means that when you are pushing in you can always have four guns firing at a target now the downside is is that when you're closer in the rear guns aren't able to fire at a better angle they fire at a worse angle due to some of the anti-air and secondaries are on the deck so when you're farther away you're able to keep a better angle of attack when you're attacking somebody but the closer you are the more broadside you have to show to be able to shoot all four guns so keep that in mind when you're pushing in because the closer you are the more broadside you're going to have to show but if you're farther away the less broadside you have to show so it's kind of uh yeah it's pretty much how you want to do it now for the Shilia it does suffer from also the poor main gun range of 18.9 kilometers but you do have a spotter plane to compensate that though so you can always use that if you're having to fight someone at further range you also have a high surface concealment of 14 kilometers when you build into it pretty much the same issue you have with the gk where you want to get close you want to do brawly but it's hard to because of that concealment but the one thing that this thing does not that the gk does not have is is a smoke stream she also does have a decent armor uh with a nice uh 32 millimeter bows for both the front and the aft of course and a 50 millimeter deck for the for the midsection which is really nice as well 
Now, this smoke screen of hers allows her to make aggressive plays with those secondaries, as you'll be seeing in this replay, and I think the next one. I don't remember if I do in the next one, but you'll see. Now, you can also pop the fighter slash spotter while the smoke is running. So if you're chasing someone down like I'm currently chasing down uh, these two battleships, the spotter will have them, will keep them spotted for you while you're in, in the smoke, which is really, really, really effective. And you can just have fun letting the secondaries do all the damage while you just sit there, sit back, maybe answer some emails, maybe take a nice sip of some tea, maybe get some spaghetti, maybe some wine along the way, get yourself a full course dinner while you enjoy yourself just watching all the carnage you get to do. Now, curiously enough, the Sicilia does have a faster rudder shift than Columbo. So I'd recommend prop mod over rudder shift. Normally I would recommend rudder shift for this massive a behemoth of an Italian BB. But due to the better rudder shift time, you don't really need it. You can just go with propulsion. Now overall with the Sicilia, I found it to be an okay, like good ship. Now, the guns can be kind of trolly at distance. Once you get close, they can absolutely slap. They can do a lot of damage. And it can also be a lot of fun. Uh, since the ship is a, a research barrel ship, you don't have to spend money on it. So you can grind it for free using the research bureau. Now, I always recommend going down the Haragumo line for research bureau. So if you're trying to get research bureau points, it's always best to do the Haragumo line. It is by far the cheapest um, after all these years for XP and credits to grind down. And it's also a very in normal as a very enjoyable experience going down the line overall if you're trying to grind research bureau points. Now for the Sicilia, you can build more into a standard BB build if you want, or you can do a secondary focus build if you like. But I'm of course I'm gonna recommend a secondary build because it's a lot more fun. It's a more of a more brawly, more enjoyable experience in my opinion. With those rear-facing 360 uh, turrets, it really just wants you to be aggressive having those kind of guns where you can rotate you can fire you can pretty much keep all four guns on the enemy at all times the sap secondaries it's amazing armor it is really hard to citadel this ship as well so the ship is pretty good at just being a tank and it's just a lot of fun to play i really enjoy it also, plus, a plus, it does have, again, 5.8 kilometer anti-air, which is by far one of the longest anti-airs of the Italian BBs. Most of the Italian BBs have like a four something kilometer anti-air, but this is one of the first to have 5.8, and that's because of those retrofitted uh, secondaries and anti-air guns as you see those little those little Atlanta guns on the side there that's because of those so props to America for putting those on there so heck yeah now overall for AP and HE usage I would honestly say AP usage is pretty big on this ship the AP can do really good when you hit your target they can do really good the HE is more of a longer distance shell usage it's due to the 1.6 Sigma. You're wanting to probably use more of a HE approach than, rather than AP, just due to the how inaccurate it will be. So probably if you're outside of maybe uh, like 16 kilometers near the max range of it without spotter, maybe 16, 17 kilometers. You want to use HE, get those fires going, get them to use some of those DCPs. Also, if you're fighting a battleship and you're within the secondary range, since the sap isn't going to start fires, you could also use HE to get those perma fires onto the enemy to get that extra fire damage going along with the sap. But it also depends, because if you're showing a lot of broadside, you're going to want to use AP, of course. If you're using a lot of, if they're just sitting bow into you, of course, you want to use HE. It just really depends upon the situation, you know? Just depends. Just depends. 
Yeah, and unfortunately the poor ya the poor uh, DD there, he didn't really get a a chance, unfortunately. But yeah, this was kind of a, a tight pickle of a match. They had two Schlieffens pushing in on us, and they kind of just shoved it over here, so it wasn't the most enjoyable of an experience. It wasn't the most enjoyable experience of all time. Having two Schlieffens and a Stalingrad pushing you? Yeah. Not the most fun. Not the most fun, but it is what it is, I guess. This thing does also get long range ASW uh, airstrikes. So you also don't have to, you know, at least you can try to hit the sub. Oh, also, in, did you guys see how in 13.2, they're adding it where the, you know, the ping marker that shows for submarines, like when they ping, they're making it where it will show a more generalized direction in what direction the submarine is going. Finally, they added that. So it's gonna be a lot easier for us to see. It's like, hey, is the submarine doing circles? Is he going more of a straight line? It's a very nice addition to make it where at least we have a better chance of punishing submarine players that just keep pinging over and over and over and over again. Like, like, it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to try to predict where the U-45 is gonna go, see which direction he turns. Because when you U-45s turn, they slow down tremendously. So you're able to punish that turn as long as you know which direction they're turning. But a lot of time, it's really hard to predict which they're going just because of how fast they're going. So the fact that they're adding in the submarine indicator where, hey, they're going this direction, when they ping, it makes the reason like, oh, hey, he's gonna most likely turn right. He's mostly gonna turn left. And you can then do, do ASW strikes accordingly, of course. They also are buffing some of the ASW range. I believe they're buffing the Ohio's. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. I know they're buffing the Ohio's. Mm, I think they're buffing Thun, uh, oh, uh, Musashi's and massachusetts i believe a lot of the older time asw uh, a lot of the older time ships that their asw is really poor range are being buffed they also are adding in asw planes to all of the heavy cruisers i have all the heavy crews besides the golden Lou line since it already has the aerial airstrikes of the you know bombs uh, that one's still going to keep depth charges but pretty much at that point all of the tech tree lines all the heavy cruisers will have uh asw airstrikes which is very much needed so all of you hedenberg enjoyers uh you can praise and sing out you're getting your aerial asws that you've been needing for for generations it's, it is your time. It is your time to shine. Enjoy. But again, you are able to get the Sicilia for 60,000 Research Bureau points, which is a very nice addition. For a Research Bureau ship, I find it a lot of fun. I still would say, like, it's, it's definitely more secondary focus out of the out of the Research Bureau ships that are available. It's definitely, like, if you're wanting more of a secondary ship, then I think the Sicilia would be a great addition for you. But if you want more of like a competitive battleship, then I would say the Ohio is still the pick to go. But um, with that further ado though, I am going to, um, pretty much I just wanted to show some basic gameplay of the Sicilia uh, for you guys to kind of see how you can play it uh, with the secondary build. But I'm now going to switch over and show you guys the build and talk about that. All right. So now that we're in port, we can take a look at the Sicilia. Now we can look at the armor scheme. So pretty much for the Sicilia, you have a 32 millimeter bow with a armored lower uh, section of the front bow there for the 16 millimeter. Very nice. With an aft section of 32 millimeters as well with the midsection of the ship having a deck of 50 millimeters helps with that 
HE spam. Very nice. You do have a side protection of 375 millimeters for the Citadel. The guns do have 406 millimeter armor in the front and for 254 on the side with the 19 millimeter superstructure. Those guns could potentially be knocked out potentially by a Petro and anything above a Petro pin. So pretty much most of the higher tier battleships can definitely pin those guns. So definitely be careful uh, for that. And you want to build into pretty much prevention, uh, preventative maintenance for sure to make sure those don't get knocked out. Looking at the Citadel, it does have a... It is below water with a very strong turtle back. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be very easy to Citadel at all on this thing. Not at all. That's a very thick turtle back. I definitely do not expect to get Citadel too much. I think the only way you could get citadel is if someone pretty much goes through the nose here, like a Yamato potentially uh hitting through right here or just going through right there that could be a citadel going through and going into the citadel it's the only way i could see it actually citadeling or just getting a good plunging fire through but i don't think this thing is going to get citadeled uh very often from all my time employing and i have not got citadeled once so i really don't think it's going to be possible so let's go into the build so for the build i have a uh, main armament uh with the damage control uh secondaries of course to build into secondaries which make the secondaries go up to 11.3 kilometers so you need to do that it also helps with the accuracy as well uh, i go with propulsion of course because of the fact this thing does have a better rudder shift than colombo you don't really need the rudder shift but again it's more of a personal preference you can go with propulsion or rudder shift uh your pick of course now i go with concealment the torpedo lookout isn't really worth it and ship consumable isn't really worth it either and now if you want to go with range because you want to be a little bit more long range and you don't want to be a secondary ship you can build into gun range and switch this over to aiming if you want but since i am building this thing for secondaries and I want to be a little bit closer range. I want to have better reload, which makes where the reload goes down to 29 seconds, which is a pretty quick reload for 16 guns. It is pretty quick reload. Now, the reason why I take the main armament here instead of the secondary one, since I am building in the secondaries, normally you want to take this instead. The main reason is because since those guns are 406 millimeter armor guns, they are more likely to get knocked out. So you definitely need a main armament to help prevent them from being knocked out as much. And of course, here you can do spotter or fighter, whichever one you prefer. But I go with spotter due to the fact it increases your gun range. So if you need to be able to shoot a little bit further, you know, you can have the spotter as well. So going into the captain build, I go with uh, preventative venous. Now, of course, if you want to do like an actual build, you can go with with luigi of course whenever he gets a kill pretty much uh when you get an extra eight percent gun range so i would definitely use luigi with this particular ship but it's more of a personal presence of course but i just love the fact that you get kill you get extra gun range so you don't have to build into it and if you get confederate you get 15 percent boost to your reload for your main guns so imagine you get confederate 15 percent faster guns and if you get a kill you get eight percent extra range very nice indeed now with this one here if you get a hundred shell hits with your main guns which it is possible with how many guns this thing has you do get an extra ship consumable time of 10 percent pretty much makes it where you're more likely to be able to actually get longer you get longer heals you get longer dcp and you get extra smoke stream, which is always very nice. So going into the captain build, uh, I go with preventative maintenance to make it where it reduces your modules getting knocked out, makes it where you have extra survivability for your secondaries and anti-air. This is pretty much mandatory for secondary builds nowadays with how much, how heavy HE metas are. You need this to be able to make sure your secondaries don't get knocked out because since secondaries are a heavy source of dpm when you're focusing so many points into them in your main builds in them you need to be able to protect your secondaries for the secondary one i go with grease the gears 
you can go with Vigilance if you want, or potentially a ASW once you get better consumables. I personally want to go with Grease the Gears just to make those the turret diverse a little bit quicker. Uh, it makes them to 36.7, so you're able to rotate the ships from side to side quicker, which really, really does help being able to move and be more maneuverable with your ship while also keeping your guns rotated is really important, so I really like Grease the Gears. After Grease the Gears, I would then take the long-range secondaries. The next one I would take, since you're building up secondaries, I would take this one. After that, of course, I would then take Fire Prevention. A lot of people would try to go with the secondary accuracy, but I highly suggest taking Fire Prevention first. Do not fall for that bait. Take Fire Prevention first if you have a 10-point. Then after that, go with Manual Secondaries. Then after that, you can do concealment and then you can do a drum and rush after that but that is how i would build the sicilia that is my build suggestion if you want to build more into main guns uh, i can just show that real quick if you want to build more into main guns you can do it more like this more of a standard build if you will or you can do it like this so you have a more of a free will of switching between the he and ap but do note, though, that Italians already have a 40% built-in gun feeder already. So you don't really need a gun feeder. But it's more more like if you want to build into guns, you can do it more like this. Or you can still have it like this. Just showing off a little bit different builds for you guys to be able to take note of. Or just try out for yourselves whenever you get this beauty of a ship. But again, you are able to get the Sicilia for 60,000 Research Bureau points. But anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. If you guys have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments down below. But this is Overlord Bo, and I'll talk to y'all later.